guys, what's up? It's Stark here. Today I want to go over sharpening and sharpening like a pro. In fact, it's actually an old school way to sharpen that a lot of people actually don't know about, which actually kind of shocked me just because it's so simple. Um, mostly in compositing is where I've seen it. I personally have never seen a single editor use this because I don't know, I feel like at least editors are they're cutting. They're not really, you know, dealing with color stuff besides just importing it and then putting their LUTs and all of that on there. So I'm gonna dive right in and just show you. So we're gonna use the unsharp mask, okay? Now this isn't the sharpening and because we're on YouTube, I'm gonna really have to dial this up a lot. So I just found for this that I'm assuming the compression amount will do and I'm, I'm probably gonna lower this radius and this is just, you know, let's just do two for now. And this isn't it. This is gonna be like the traditional way you would probably go about sharpening is using an unsharp mask, okay? Now this way that I'm gonna sh show you is actually it's not so much that it's a scientific way, it's just exploiting sort of the way that color works in that we're just doing a color conversion and then we're like piggybacking on top of the fact that it lightens the image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this exact same one, okay? So we have the top beauty and the lower beauty and then we're gonna paste it. Now, this is something I use all the time because I I, I can pause it a lot inside of After Effects. So we're actually gonna use a very old school thing that, I don't know, you use it, maybe you do, but uh, it's the Cineon converter, okay? And actually, uh, if you're not sure what Cineon is, Cineon was the first computer-based digital film system created by Kodak in the early 90s. Essentially, when going from film to digital, it was a whole system, but I don't wanna get into all of that and I just wanna make these short. So what we're gonna do is for, first of all, I'm in linear color space and that's how I work, especially with compositing. So all we're gonna do is take uh, the linear to log, all right? We're gonna switch the position here and then we're gonna just convert it back. Okay, so we're gonna do log to linear. Now, I'm gonna shut these on and off and you're gonna see the difference. And I have two more examples and I'm just gonna copy and paste it, but I just wanna show you that you're getting a more natural sharpening. So. I'm gonna go in, especially look at the eyes, okay? So I'm sure you've gotten this, I, and I know that it looks, oh, this is not the like crazy stuff, but it really is a big difference when you do it. So you're still getting, you're getting the sharpening, but you're not getting this darkening that tends to happen, okay? And the unsharp mask, it's kind of weird, right? So how the unsharp mask works is that it essentially makes a temporary mask and it compares areas that are sharp and areas that aren't. So it makes essentially a mask of low contrast, high contrast. Then it sharpens the area that is that it deems not sharp. Once those are essentially like equalized or whatever, like from these numbers, like where you're looking where it looks good, that's where it sharpens. But this is the problem is that you tend to get it a lot in edges, right? So. This is cool. I mean, this is a face one. And I, I tried to choose, this is just red footage from their website that I tried to choose and do. But I mean, let's go back down to something like 100. And I'm trying to balance it working or being noticeable across. So 100 is about more, it's a lot more natural. See, I, I doubt you could tell from the compression. So I'm gonna have to keep doing that. But you can actually see maybe a little bit in the eye right here. And I noticed on her uh, lips too. So if I shut it off. But it, it's pretty awesome. Now, again, this is a face. There's not a lot of uh, straight edges. I mean, you do have the hair, but hair is kind of noisy. So I actually have uh, this. I'm just going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to put it to the bottom one. I have this City Lights one. And this one is where... This is a really good example because there's high contrast and there's a lot of just, if you're not, if you know on the high contrast is, there's a lot of sharp lines, a lot of vertical horizontal lines and stuff. So this one, you'll, you'll definitely see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on the reveal and I'm going to go back to 200 because that seems to be working and then we'll turn it down. Okay. So this is usually what you get when you do a lot of sharp mask. All right. You're going to get this super crazy, gross, you know, 
looking guy here. Now I'm just gonna shut this off and then we could dial in numbers and you'll see, especially here, I'll zoom in when I turn it off. Let's just make sure that we have linear to log. And you'll see that it's not, you're not getting that haloing. Okay, it's still too high, of course, still too high. I'm not gonna deny that at all. But like, look at this, we're keeping the detail right in this fading. It's not, it's not just, it's not compressing it. It's not adding so much contrast to it. And all that's doing, the reason why is because we're again, taking, we're just, all right, let me go to the one that actually has it. We're just taking advantage of the fact that the image gets lightened. So it's just a color conversion. So instead of doing it on something that already has tons of contrast, we're essentially subtracting the contrast adding contrast, putting it back in. And again, too high, but let's go to like 100, okay? So I guess this is like a fair amount, I'd say. I mean, maybe 50, let's turn off the, this is what we started with, okay? Remember, so the original, let's go down to 50. Let's see how that still compares when we turn it off and on. And look in the shadow areas, and that's where this really shines. It doesn't add, you don't get these color changes or color bleed, it's awesome. So again, just gonna do one more example. Well, that kind of mixes both of these. And I feel like this is probably the most common one you'll run into. I mean, I guess it depends on the type of work you do, but I'm gonna copy it. And we have, again, this is all red footage. You could download it. I actually compressed it down to 1080p and or 1080 width or 1920 width. But the reason I did that is because these were originally eight and six K. Now, when you have eight and six K footage, you have tons of information to work with. So sharpening it, even, even if I like turned it up, it still looked exactly like this. So this is where it, I, I noticed on this one, this one's the awesome one actually. So I'm gonna again, paste it so we could hide the reveal, do the unsharp mask. And I want you to look around her eye in this case and under here, under her like chin. And you're seeing you're gonna get a lot of, again, right on these high contrast areas. See how it's adding this like dark shadow to it. Now let's make sure the settings are actually the same. Okay. So we'll go around her eye, turn it off. And you're gonna see that it's more natural. It's way more natural. Okay, so still 100%, always good to work there. So old. See, it's kind of just squeezing in the color, but you're not getting the sharpening. That's the part about this. It's kind of like working in the background, so it's not noticeable. So even, I think I turned this thing up way high, so let's go to like 200. And you can still see that even under here, I mean, you're starting, it's going to start to introduce it at some point, okay? But we'll dial this up to 200. And it's just, it's a lot worse. So here, let me go in. And essentially it seems like it's just doing like a color clamp, right? So look at that. You know, it's up high. We still, you know, look right here. Even on her shoulder, there's still color there. It's dark. You don't, I don't recommend doing this, but it's, it's awesome. So you're just gonna get a more natural look. So let's say, I don't know, let's do like 75, just like a, a slight sharpen and it's good to compare. So you can see, and let's go to the eye. This is where I notice it the most a lot with people at least. So like on, you're losing that color data, just compressing it out and on the, Right here, I've noticed it on the vertical surface. So it starts to introduce this halo. Cool. So guys, that's honestly it. Super simple, works exactly the same way in Premiere. You just color to Cineon, add in your sharpening, and convert it back to your original color space and you're all set to go. So that's it. And this is, I, I know it's super simple, but awesome. So you should probably do this from now on.